I am now the worst salesperson I have ever been in my career. And yet I am super grateful to have a full roster of clients plus a waiting list. And I really believe that that can be true for anyone who is willing to do authentic marketing. So let's talk about how, how this is possible because what if you don't have to try so hard to get clients? What if you don't have to be great at persuading people and making sure you're saying the right things and making sure that your copywriting is really good, uh, that you are, your website is well designed, that you have a, a, an incredible funnel, you know, sales funnel in place? Because I have seen people with a great sales funnel, with great copywriting, with um, even people who are really good at selling, and they still have trouble getting enough clients. So it's, you know, let me, let me tell you the way that I recommend and um, let me know if you have any questions. And I really believe that this can be a much more, uh, well, authentic and sustainable way to build a business uh, without having to perform and um, show up so perfectly is basically what it is. I show up, but I don't, I'm not worried about showing up perfectly. You see the difference? Because I work with some people and they're like, well, I've got to get all, everything right so that I'll get clients. And I'm sitting, I was like, I've seen, I, by this point, I've worked with over a thousand business owners and entrepreneurs and many people get it right, but they still don't have any business. So there's a piece of advice that I got years ago early on in my career, I'm so grateful to have gotten this simple piece of advice. And it was from, by that point, already a very successful business person named Paul Hawken. He is a environmentalist and a kind of an eco business type person. And he told me, actually, I overheard him say this to somebody else. So he wasn't even telling me, it was overheard. And the advice is, the, this person was saying, oh, should I take this job or how should I you know, manage my career? And he said, go where you're respected. And I just overheard that. And I thought that was, it made me so curious for a long time. What does that really mean? But over the years, I've come to understand what that means, which is you can either try really hard to make people respect you, okay? Um, and to sell to them, or you can do, you can experiment with your skills and your voice until you find what people automatically resonate more with. Do more of that in the heart of service. You add the heart of service. That's kind of what I would add to that advice. And then by doing that consistently enough, you gather a group of people who just love you, who naturally trust you. Um, I should say they trust you even though you don't have to be anyone other than who you are. You don't have to perform. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do things right. You can make mistakes all the time. You don't have to have be a good copywriter. You don't have to be a good salesperson. And yet they trust you, they like you. And because you are in a heart of service and you get to know them, you offer things that are at the intersection of what you're good at and what they want. So coming back to that simple advice, go where you're respected means how do we develop now in the career advice, it means, okay, take the job where people are, are like really respecting you rather than, than you have to fight so hard to, to, to be seen and be heard. But in, in our business, in, our, in your building of a business, an authentic business, go where you're respected means that you develop a base of true fans. You know, and I've talked about this so often, and this is just a different way of talking about it. And the four steps, and, and, and the reason why we do this is like I said, like, like you'll get to a point where if you do this, where you serve from your heart, and you experiment enough to know, oh, I've tried these different things and this seems to work best with people based on, based on my strengths. You'll get to a point where 
you don't need to sell anymore. You simply announce, hey, everyone, I'm thinking of doing this. What do you think? And then you get people going, oh, yes, I want that. Yes, I'm interested. And sometimes people, sometimes people won't say anything. People, there will be silence. People don't, don't want it. Or they'll say, oh, it's not the right time. Or um, yeah, you know, I can't afford it or whatever. That just means it's not where you're respected. You see what I mean? Go where you're respected. What you're respected is where you have built an audience of true fans. You try different offerings and you notice what they really resonate with rather than trying so hard to say, no, no, this is what I believe you all need. I'm so passionate about this product or the service or the program and I must make you buy it. I must make you believe this thing. And it's just, you know, even, even when with the base of true fans, they don't buy everything that you sell, right? Well, as you, as, you have a, a, as you build a base of true fans and as it grows more and more, it is much easier to sell just about anything. Like at this point, I can sell just about anything to you and at least a few of you will buy it. <laughs> at least a few of you will buy it where I might actually say, well, okay, it's worth my time to, to, to create it. You notice what I just said. I sell or I announce the product before I create it. Now, the reason I can do that is because of my business model, I, I create digital courses, which I have recommended to you as well. Um, it's the best product business-wise to create these days because it just takes your wisdom and knowledge and you're helping people and it's, there's no manufacturing to be done. It's very sustainable and that, that environmentally sustainable in that regard. And it's very easy to, to just create and you can, you can announce it before you even create it, right? So I announce something and see if enough people buy it. Enough people buy it, then I create it. Otherwise, I switch gears and announce something different. I refund the people or say, hey, do you want to just, you know, see what my next thing is? You might want to buy that. Otherwise, I'm happy to refund you. So make selling unnecessary by being your helpful self through content consistently Remember, we create consistent content, not just because, not because we're trying to sell. This is my whole point. We're not like, I'm not trying to sell. What I'm trying to do with my consistent content is to hopefully bless you, hopefully give you some inspiration and some ideas that help you in your business. I'm also exploring my own ideas. I'm exploring my own. It's a personal growth project. That's why I keep coming back again and again and again to bless you and to grow personally. It keeps me creative. It keeps me, it keeps my life vibrant. You know, it's exciting to create and my life continues to be joyful and exciting because I keep creating. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to keep creating for the rest of your life to keep creating because that's keeps your life vibrant. You'll never, your mind, you know, will, will last a lot longer than someone who does not create. Okay. Your brain, I should say, your mind will last forever, but your brain will last longer than someone who doesn't create. So you create consistently as a personal growth project to keep exploring your ideas, to keep deepening your ideas, to keep practicing how to say your ideas in a way that, that really resonates with you and happens to resonate with people as well and blesses them. Okay? Keep on creating for the rest of your life is what I'm asking you to do, which is what I'm going to be doing. Not, because, not just because it's good for business, but it's, really, it's good for you. Like, Why wouldn't you create for the rest of your life? That's my question. Why wouldn't you do it? It's like the most exciting thing in life is to create. What else is there that's exciting? Going on vacations? Fine. You're excited for a couple of weeks, maybe. You're probably tired, okay, after vacation. All right, but creating keeps you vibrant. That's why I keep harping on this, right? So create consistently as a personal growth project and to bless others and to keep exploring your voice and to continually for the rest of your life Explore that intersection between what you're passionate about and what people want from you. That is not a one-time project. It is not a one-year project. It is not even a 10-year project. It is a rest of your life project. We can only get more deep and get more um, uh, resonant with that intersection between our passion, which is always evolving, and what the world wants, which is always evolving. So it's always a moving, it's always a moving puzzle, okay? what we want and what the world wants from us. It's always a moving puzzle. We're always exploring that and always getting better at it, deeper, right? So create content consistently as a help and as a personal growth project 
out of a heart of service. That's number one. Number two step is to learn how to distribute your content effectively. For example, you know, I talk about Facebook ads and how much I love it. I do that all the time. I use Facebook ads all, all the time, but also collaborations. You know, I've talked about that and why I love it so much. You collaborate with other creators to grow your audiences together. Okay, so that's step number two is distributing your content. Otherwise, who's gonna see it? You can be authentic all day long, but you're in your own room, okay? <laughs> create, distribute, create step one consistently for the rest of your life. Distribute step two, which you'll get more and more automated with. You'll get more and more really quick with it or you'll, you'll, you'll automate it or you'll outsource it eventually. But um, I think my, my dog just came into the room. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, by the way. Um, there, there he is. Okay, <laughs> you see him? I'm looking at the screen. That's why I'm not looking at this right now. Anyway, um, so there's a little bit of visual interest for you besides myself. Um, so create consistently as a personal growth project, as a heart of service, distribute effectively. So for example, Facebook ads or collaboration. Three is to consistently and occasionally announce, hey, everyone, I'm thinking of creating this or I've created this quickly. I, you know, I'm thinking of creating this, or I've created this quickly. What do you all think? Is this something exciting to you? Is this something you want to do with me? A product that, that I should create, that, a program we should do together, that I've put together? That, are you excited about it? So step three is to consistently announce different offerings to, again, try to figure out, explore the intersection between your passion and what the world wants from you, okay? That's step three is consistently announce offerings consistently test, which is why you see me announcing a new course every month or something that I'm reteaching from before. Because I'm like, hey, everyone, are you still interested? Hey, do you want this? The step three. Step four, right, is to, um, in fact, I'm like looking at my notes here because I just, I, you know, I want to know, be sure I, um, I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I talk about these steps in different formulations. For this blog post, step three was actually to connect with your biggest fans. Sorry, step four was to make, to make announcements of your product service as a test. Step three was to connect with your biggest fans one-on-one -on -one with as many as you have time for. You don't have time for all of them, but for some of them. And to connect with them, to get to know them better, to say, to, to, if you understand them well enough and what they're looking for, then you're much, much clearer about the intersection between what you want and what they want. Therefore, step four is to then put together an idea to see if they'll buy it based on what you know of them. So that's, the, that's my today's formulation of the four steps of authentic marketing. Well, I always say this, well, not often enough, truth with a capital T cannot be put into words, right? Truth is always just today, I wanna formulate it this way. Tomorrow I might formulate it a different way, but it's still around a similar idea. It just might be chunked up in different ways. So that's my, that's my formulation for you today of what authentic marketing is in four steps. Create, distribute, connect, and experiment. I hope this is helpful. And by doing that, it's all an act of service. You see, it's not, it's not about you being great at copywriting or you being trying to be persuasive and, and holding your breath and see if anyone buys because you, you, you work so hard on trying to persuade them. It's, it's, it's about connecting from the heart. It's about serving. It's about exploring what's real, with, what's alive within you. So all this is about the purpose of life. The way we do authentic business is not to try to make money and try to make sure you've got your funnel right. It's the purpose of life. It's, it's, it's taking the purpose of life, right? Which is about love and about knowledge and joy and learning and growth and putting that into business context. That's it. That's why it's so fun. That's why it's, it's so important, in my opinion. It's not just about business. It's about, it's about life, right? It's about growth and, and, and uh, personal development. So I hope this is helpful. And by doing that, you make selling unnecessary because now you just be yourself and you're, you're kind of connecting with friends and you're just, you have a large enough audience. As you keep doing this, you get bigger and bigger audiences and it's easier and easier and selling becomes less and less necessary. I hope this is helpful. I look forward to your comments and your questions. Go ahead and put that below. And while I'm letting you do that, I'm gonna see if there's any comments from my live watchers here. Let's 
see here. Got to get to the right place. I was not in the right place earlier. Okay. Great. Let's see if there's any comments here. Okay. Um, I want to thank uh, some of you for joining me, Brianna and Cheryl, Natalia, Elisa, Mary, Caroline. Thank you all so much for joining me. And um, Elisa says, sharing is selling without the pleasure, the, the pressure. Sharing is selling without the pressure. That's why it's so easy to buy from you, Jordan. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, uh, I'll let you go. I hope this is inspiring to you and kind of helps you to look at your strategies for the year. Strategies is really just how can you express from your heart and to explore your mind in a way that also happens to help your business. That's all, all right? Take care, be well.